All right, guys, I'm going to be finishing up my high school uh, video soon, probably, because I'm really running out of stuff to talk about. And what sucks is I'm starting to remember stuff from the, uh, I'm getting ready to senior year, but the grades before that, that I forgot to mention. So I'm going to do one more after this and maybe recap what I forgot. Because some of the videos, it, I didn't really say a whole lot because I don't remember. It's taken me a lot to remember this. But senior year, I took some notes on. And I actually do remember uh, quite a bit more about that right off the bat. Um, so, after this, I'll probably do one more of the things I forgot to mention on the other ones. Now, let's. I want to start with the summer before, like I always do. That summer, I did not have a job. I worked at the Cave Rock State Park the... Um, the last summer I end up not getting that job back this summer and my grandparents wouldn't let me go get a job because the closest place to work was Harrisburg and they said you're gonna burn up you're basically be working for the gas money to get there and they said you're a teenager their exact words were um <laughs> yeah Mike I'll, I'll start complaining about something again soon um my grandpa's or exact words were you're a teenager what do you need money for He's like, what, you need You need five bucks to cruise town on the weekend? I'll give you that. You don't need to be, you need to work, you know, focus on school. Because when I worked at Cave Rock State Park, I came on late. And I just want to go home and play guitar. So I was like completely neglecting homework and all kinds of stuff. So they knew that working, they knew I wouldn't, you know, keep my grades up if I was working, I guess, after school. Anyway, I, I, I couldn't get my job back, long story short. They wouldn't let me have a job. They said I really didn't need money for anything. And they were right. I mean, all I did was cruise town. And back then, five bucks would take you through pretty much the whole weekend. Okay, that summer, um, I ended up getting a computer. My mom's friend gave me a computer. It was old. It was junky. But I got internet. And I think that happened, bef that happened before that summer, I think. I don't know. That's some other stuff, my, my internet obsession. That's something I forgot to mention um, earlier. That'll be on the next one. Anyway. I used to chat on MIRC all the time, if, if any of you guys are old enough to remember that. And I'd talk on a guitar chat room all the time, and I'd talk in, um, I'd talk to these girls from like Australia and other places, and I got them to actually like write me letters and send them to me, like physical mail. And so I had like a couple of these internet girlfriends, and of course, the only picture I sent them was the one where I looked kind of thin, because I was a big kid. Um, so I, I tricked them the best I could before the days of, of Photoshop. And I just remember that summer, um, I, I watched the breakfast club religiously that summer for whatever reason. And my grandparents went to Harrisburg all the time and they asked me what I want to eat. And it was a Burger King, the BK big fish. I, I scarfed those all summer. It's a wonder I didn't have a damn heart attack. I did that and watched the, the breakfast club and would stay up all damn night on the internet. And, and what's funny is that my grandparents would bitch at me for not working, yet they wouldn't let me go get a job. It was it was whatever. But I'd stay up all night talking to these people. In fact, whenever I got home uh, from cruising town stuff on the weekends, I wanted to um, hurt and get back and get online. Yeah, my George, I used to have web TV as well after that, after that computer was shot. Uh, that's a whole set of videos in itself. Um, the stuff that went on there. And... Uh, well, maybe not really. <laughs> and um, the first time I ever got drunk was that summer. And it was the weekend before I went back to school. I, uh, I'm going to, I'm, I don't think I'm going to tell whose house I was at or who got it for me. I don't like ratting people out. But anyway, that was a, um, quite a night. And uh, I'm not going to say who all was there if, the people involved don't care me. I'll, I'll tell a story about the first time I got drunk. But anyway, that's, that's what got me drinking was uh, staying at a friend's house with a bunch of us and got a hold of some alcohol. And I remember um, my stomach got to burning because I wasn't used to drinking alcohol. And at one point I thought I was going to puke and I didn't. And I remember going upstairs, my stomach was burning. I thought I was going to throw up. And I was like, I swore to God, I was like, God, if. If you'll let this go away, not let me puke and get sick, I'll never drink again. Well, we all know how promises to God go, and uh, I was down drinking again in five minutes. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm laughing at Mike, what Mike George is saying. Okay, so that was my summer of 98. I basically, uh, it wasn't near, it was, it was fun, it wasn't bad, but the summer of 97 was 
the all time greatest. And I and I got kind of bummed because it wasn't as cool as the summer of ninety seven. Now uh let's get to school that year, my senior year. Um I remember waking up and I always listen to music and I remember for some reason uh Sepultura's Roots Bloody Roots album and uh, Anthrax's Volume 8, The Threat is Real, being the two CDs of choice that year. And uh, I remember that. And I remember the smell of... I, I had a, a package of all these little samples of colognes, and one of them was Curve, whoever makes Curve. And for whatever reason, whenever I hear um, Sepultura, the song Roots, Bloody Roots, or uh, uh, or Anthrax's uh, Inside Out, it makes me think of that cologne smell for some reason and being real tired and waking up. And, okay, I remember... Uh, I. Oh yeah, the summer of 98 also was how I got into Faith No More. That's when I got real big into Faith No More. And then later, my other favorite band, The Misfits, a kid went to my school who was real big into metal. He was like, me and him were like, had a lot of stuff in common, like what we liked. And he gave me the Misfits American Psycho album. And that's what got me into The Misfits. And I don't remember his name. I think his name, name, uh, name might have been Garrett. But he, he moved away. He was one of the missing kids. I should have mentioned him on one of those other videos. Anyway, he got me into The Misfits. Um, I remember, um, the, one of the highlights of that year is me getting accused for a death threat that I didn't write. And I'm not, I'm not going to say who did it. I mean, everyone knows, but I, I'm going to say right now, I did not write that damn death threat. And what happened was I let a girl that I liked borrow a tape of 1134, my first band, a garage tape, and I drew like a logo on it and stuff. And she was to it and I'm sure she thought it sucked, but probably told me it was pretty good just to be nice. A day or two later, her and her friends come up, and she asked if I wrote this thing, and it was like this death threat written like a poem. And I don't remember what it says, but I remember the writing kind of looked like the writing I did on the on the cassette case for the 1134 thing. I was like, I didn't write that. I said, if I wrote something, a death threat, I'd do a lot better than this. And some of my friends wrote, read it, and they were like, oh, I don't know, man, that was pretty good, you know. And anyway, later on, I got called to the office, and there's my grandparents and the sheriff and this some other guy, detective, or I forget his name, but that guy was out to nail me. But Carl Cox was sheriff, and I've known him my whole life, and he, he knew I didn't do it. And they even called my best friend, Michael Vaughn, to the office. <clears throat> and he vouched for me, said, you know, Chad would have told me, and I would have. I would have told every one of my friends, hey, hey, I wrote this death threat. But the, the, the stupid move on my part was the only handwriting sample I had was I'd written some 1134 lyrics in, in my notebook. For whatever reason, I didn't even write most of this but the first the, so that was a sample I had him a uh, writing sample I had and I gave it to him and the first songs with and the song was without any question it's based on the movie Maniac so the lyrics were the streets are dark and the night is young the taste of you is still on my tongue you're running scared your screams fill the air your body's cold you're 22 years old something like that I might have goof some of those up but that's real close and the chorus is the cops have not a clue well what happens when they find you your body will tell the truth it's true I mean it's about murder and some chick and you know that's what I gave him but I was sure I'd get you know they 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 I had to go in a couple times do writing samples they figured out I didn't do it I guess I never got in trouble for it but everyone's like well he's into heavy metal and horror movies you know so I must have done it you know one of those things. It was like that West Memphis Three or whatever kind of thing on a like a you know Midwest or, or more like a white trash you know generic version of it or whoever those kids were that supposedly killed. Anyway, so and I remember that when that happened, I went and stayed at my mom's because I wanted to get the hell out of the area and I ended up buying the Mr. Bungle album. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, throughout uh. Anything else? Oh, yeah, and, and, and throughout that year, like, when it came to prom or, or, or like, when we decorate the corners for homecoming, you know, I was one of the, the art geeks. Well, any a lot of people got to help out, but I used that to my advantage, and I cut class for, like, a week constantly to go help. and be like, oh, yeah, I've, I've got to go help and do, you know, whatever with that. And they let me out. I never got caught. I didn't hardly go to class at all uh, during, I think it was – prom it, prom i think i don't know it was one of the of several events where there was big decorating i always got called to help and i remember also um i, I was kind of unkind to my teachers <laughs> and uh uh and i really feel bad about miss austin because she was my art teacher from grade school up and i didn't take art that year until like the second half of the year and 
uh, whenever I went in there, she was like, oh, no, you're not getting in here. And I'm like, what? And he goes, because Chris Kimes was in there. And she said, you two almost made me quit teaching in, when you guys were in junior high for the stuff you guys used to do. I'm like, I'm like I ain't going to do nothing. You know, well, I get in there. And, of course, you know, my friends are in there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the class clown and, and I'm getting nagged on. And I got, I'm going to get really loud for this. And uh, instead of being like, hey, Miss Austin, and raise my hand while I need something, I'd be like, hey, Miss Austin! It was real loud, real rude. I feel really bad about this because she was so sweet to me. And, and the dog's over here like, what the hell's going on? And and eventually, after doing this two or three times, you know, she chewed my ass, which is a deserve. The other thing I did was I actually failed Eng an English semester in... Um, in uh, my junior year, which is weird, because I always excelled in English, like I was always great in it, and I don't, I don't remember why I, I failed or made a D. I think I might have made a D and went up my grade. I, I don't know. Whatever the case is, I took English a semester of English over again, and I'd had it with Mr. Humphrey, who uh, God knows I, I messed with that guy real bad. But I had Mr. Gerald's, and um, the thing I would do in there was, and I'm gonna have to get real loud on this again is like she'd say something that was kind of joking or everybody ha, ha, kind of giggling i'd be like ah! <laughs> oh i mean it just agging on real loud laughing and eventually she caught on that i was being a smart ass and you know i just shut up and then she used to love me she was like oh chad blah 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 you ought to just go ahead and stay throughout the whole year in this class because she really liked me by the end of that she wanted me gone she was like out and you know there were kids down there that would take like six PE classes a day and do all this shit. And I went to Mr. Wyman's office. He wouldn't let me. So I had to take some kind of like beginner, like remedial math class, which I didn't care if I failed it or not because I, I my math credits were good. I tried to let him get me to take it. My two English is my junior year. And I would have had everything done a year early, but he wouldn't let me do it. But, he, but he'd let other kids take like six PEs and all this other stuff. I don't know what his problem was with me because I never directly messed with him. Some of these teachers. Yeah, sure. I made their lives a living hell, but not Lyman. Um, let's see, weekends. Weekends got kind of boring because I was like the only one of my friends without a girlfriend. And I, like I said in one of my other videos, I'd, I'd make an ass out of myself in front of the whole county. But, I mean, as far as asking a girl out, I was way chicken shit. Uh, we went bowling a lot there for a while. I remember that um, there, during high school, around the senior year. Had no girlfriend. I had Jimmy Belford. Uh, I, I had came back home and was back around Rosie Claire, and I ended, and I was you know John's one of my best friends, and that's why I got to be real good friends with Jimmy. And I just hang out with Jimmy, and we cruise around, and we go out to the 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 sand thing or whatever behind the um the nursing home, and we jam Pantera and Fear Factory and do donuts out in the um out there, and uh, and I remember one time me and him went looking around trying to bust people screwing and we caught uh, Ryan Kaler and uh, Courtney Cook out there in the sand area back where the weeds are growing up. And he was showing me all the places people would go to do stuff and we were trying to bust them. I also remember uh, I drank as much as I could, which that, that basically that year is what launched everything. I'd already told the story about being at Lauren M. Pastato's dad's house and starting a chainsaw drunk. But anytime I get my hands on alcohol, I'd do it. And... Uh, the probably one of the weirder things was I got in this kick of, I'd ride around with Kim Mosley, like in the back of her car. And I think her sister, Tammy, there was always somebody with her. I think it was Tammy and, uh, maybe one of the Milligan sisters or somebody. And I remember I just hang out with them and, and I never hardly talked to her in school. In fact, I don't think I really did, but on the weekend, somehow I ended up working my way into hanging out with her. And I don't remember much about it. Other, I'd sit in the back of their car. I remember one time I was really drunk and, uh. I was with them, and we kept driving by my house, and my grandma was still up at like 11.30. My curfew was midnight, and I'm like, oh, God, you know, she's going to find out I'm drinking. And I had to go, because she always said, even if you're drinking vodka, I'll smell it. Well, I came home pretty lit and held a conversation with her, and she never knew it. She never knew until uh, uh, this next event I'm going to talk about, uh, when I got arrested for illegal consumption. Me... The girl I was dating and two other people, I'm going to keep everybody anonymous that was in on this incident, decided to go out drinking. And we went way out in the gravels, like out in the Iron Furnace, and we ended up um, uh, way out. Uh, I, I, in fact, I didn't realize, remember where we were at until one time me and this like skanky chick were hanging out. And I was trying to mess around with her, and I ended up finding out the same place by mistake out there. But anyway... Um, and I don't remember that girl's name. I really don't. And, uh, anyway, 
uh, we went out there, we partied, and we were on the way back, and we made it back to the Iron Furnace, and the other two people were way ahead of us, and I was messed up, I was like, oh, I'm going the wrong way, and I took the long way, all the way out and ended up on Route 1, uh, and ended up busting a tire, and I ended up pulling into somebody's driveway, they weren't home, and I don't remember, remember the guy's last name when he got, but anyway, uh, and I had a big stereo system, so I was like, oh, I gotta change this tire, and you know, I'm pretty buzzed, and, uh, so I take, I start taking the stereo out, and the guy comes home, and he's like, hey, what are you, what's going on, man, and I was like, hey, uh, oh, I busted a damn tire, blah, 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 and he goes, let me ask you something, have you been drinking or smoking something, I'm like, nothing, and he goes, don't lie to me, I said, well, I've had a few to drink, and he asked who I was, and I said, um, uh, I told him my name, and he goes, are you Kim's son? I'm like, yeah. And uh, I'm like, okay, my grandpa was a steak cop. I'm getting out of this. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm thinking uh, I can, you know, somehow get out of this. Well, I don't remember what point we knew something was up, but uh, we started chucking alcohol bottles out of that car across the road. I don't remember what point in time that was, me and the girl I was with. Well, uh, next thing I know, here comes the steak cop. And, I'm, and you know, oh, shit. He gets he gets a flashlight and goes over my car that he's like kind of looking through shit. I watch his light go directly over a bottle of booze that we missed and he like doesn't see it. Well, they take her in the house and I'm like big bad guy, big you know bad drunk bad guy, and the they make me do a field sobriety test and I don't I think I did good, but of course I can't tell you for sure because I was drinking. I don't rem I wasn't that bad though. I mean, by the time all this happened, I was sobering up pretty quick. And <clears throat> what got me was they had me stand on my my feet, you know, one or one foot, and count to th uh, yeah, it was thirty, you know, like, and they made me say one one hundred, two one hundred. <clears throat> Everything was fine until I got to twenty one one hundred, and I went twenty one hundred, twenty one one hundred. 21100 hang on I'll get it 20 that was one 23100 28100 started skipping numbers and he's like get in the car so I got put in the cop car and he let me sit up front and he cuffed me and I'm trying to get out of it so I'm like you know so my grandpa was a state cop and he's like I bet you're really proud right now and at this point I'm legitimately if I was that bad off I wouldn't remember any of this stuff because whenever I get really drunk, I, I just don't remember shit. And, and I remember this pretty clearly. And I just remember telling him, I'm not that bad. And, you know, and he goes, well, everybody says that. The worse you are, the more you're going to say that. And I'm like, no, seriously, I'm honestly really not that bad. And by the time we got to round one, oh, yeah, before we left, I had to call my dad. I was scared to death to call my grandparents. So I called my dad because he said, if I ever need anything, give him a call. And he had to call into work. He said, you better have your own bail money. Well, I had, I had enough money to bail myself out on me, thank God. And I get in the sheriff's office, and I'm, and uh, I get printed. I'm pretty sure I got printed, but he, they gave me a breathalyzer. And by that point, I hadn't been drinking for a, about an hour, I think, maybe longer. And I went to a point oh six, which is below the legal limit. So they couldn't give me a DUI, but that's right after that zero tolerance law kicked in. So. I ended up losing my license for three months, and my dad told me, he came and got me, and he said, and I remember my dad started laughing at one point, and I'm like, what's funny about this? He goes, I he goes, I wish I could be there when you tell your nanny and pa about what just happened. So he goes, I'm coming to get you, and we're going to change your flat tire, and we're going to get that stereo put back in, because I ended up leaving my system outside all night. And dad uh, came and got, he goes, but he goes, you're getting up early. So, um, uh, you know, and so I end up having to get up at like five in the morning, hung over. And I have to go tell my grandpa, I'm like, hey, I got something to tell you. Well, what's that? I got arrested last night. And anyone, I mean, anyone that knows my grandpa, man, it's zero to 60 with him getting pissed. And he was calm as could be. And I told him. And he was like, okay. And my dad told me, don't tell. And I've never told who, who got it for me. But he said, I don't want to know. And you don't ever rat, up, rat out who bought you that alcohol. If they were a friend enough to get it for you, be cool and don't rat him out. So I go take a shower. I'm getting ready for dad. Come upstairs. My, he's told my grandma. My grandma's like, I want to know one thing. Where do you get it? Who bought it for you? And I said, I'm not telling you. And I never did tell him. And we went and I got my stereo put back in my car. Uh, 
my grandpa tried to get me out of it, went to the state's attorney, it, and, and I was going to get out of that with nothing but probation, but it went to the state. The state cops sent it to Springfield. The, the state's attorney and all that had it lined out to where I was, you know, they had me off the hook. And I lost my, and my dad was like, we didn't know for sure if I was going to lose my license. And my dad said, you know what, if you don't lose your license from the state, you're going to lose it by me. And he came over and he yanked the plates off my car, which began me. And then he let me have him back around time for prom. But then at right after, it was like right before uh, I graduated is when I lost my license. Like right before, like the week of like graduation. So that was like that was one of the big events of senior year. I got almost got a de I had a death threat pinned on me that I didn't do, which I got unpinned and I got nailed for little consumption and all the other shenanigans. And that summer, I worked at IDOT like I, you know, I've already made a video about graduation and we still did the USCW wrestling and partied and had a good time as always. And I guess that's all I got to say for senior year. I'll probably only do one more video in high school, and that might be recapping some of the stuff I forgot about because the more I've talked about this the more I, I started remembering stuff that I missed from the other years it's just been it's been you know I've been out of high school almost 20 years so it's hard to remember some of this stuff and uh, I don't know everybody's wanted me to keep doing these high school videos but I don't know how much more I got in me to do them and then I gotta get back to my normal videos of bitching about stuff as Mike George said so anyway I'm gonna get off here and continue doing some video editing